What's going on everybody? Today is a big day. You know, it's kind of ironic because we've been saying that so much lately. It's almost like deja vu. It's almost like repetitive. It's almost like monotonous. But that's a good thing. These are good things to be those type of things about. Wait, that's a good thing to be these type of things about. Better way to word it. I know that was kind of confusing right there. But again, today is a big day because we are going to meet with a guy by the name of David who runs some halfway houses. You know, this guy's got a really crazy story. This guy was actually in a halfway house himself back in 2012, I believe. And now, six years later, he's now running multiple halfway houses. We met this guy at the job fair and, you know, to reiterate something that we said when we left the job fair, going to that thing was a really, really good idea. It was probably one of the best ideas that we've had in a long time because, you know, we met Danny there, we've met David who runs these halfway houses, and we met so many other resources that we hope to be able to bring you guys real soon. And you know, I hope that by going to do this video with David, by meeting him, by interviewing him, by seeing the ins and outs of these halfway houses, potentially meeting some of the guys who are living in these places, I'm hoping that After Prison Show is able to work with and help in some way with what these guys already have going on. And in fact, go ahead and show you this right here, this super thin envelope right here. It's, there's not much in here. But there is a small contribution that After Prison Show wants to make to David and the halfway houses that he has operational uh, just to try to help a little bit. It's only $200. But you know, I feel like, I feel like that's a good thing. You know, it's $200 that they didn't have prior to us giving this to them. And it could also potentially be the start of more contributions from us to come. Oh, you caught me digging in my nose. God, I hope I did. <laughs> I probably didn't, I'm going to be honest, but no, I hope I did. I think you did. Anyways. Yeah, I don't know what to say now that you caught me digging in my nose. You just got the camera on me now. Might as well eat it, right? Golly, Joe. Uh, I know that's gonna be on a freaking video too. Even but, if even if you don't make a video out of this footage, you're just gonna post like a 15 second clip on the channel of me digging in my nose. Ah, I'm alright with it. You know what I'm saying? What else am I supposed to do? It's not even 100% guaranteed that I caught it, Dave. Oh, but you if caught it. but if I did, trust and believe. My thumb was still in my nose when I turned around and seen the camera in my face. Well, anyways, enough about your boogers. What are you thinking about all of this? And I don't want to say I don't know what I'm thinking, but I know how I feel. And I just feel as if, you know, this is another step in the right direction. You know, the more, you know, we're a part of helping people or or just bettering folks in the community. Or the more we're a part of things like that, the more, and I'm just speaking about how I'm feeling for myself, the more I, I feel that I'm distancing myself from that old lifestyle, you know, and it's really a good feeling. So, uh, you know, to all those, you know, ex-addicts out there looking for something to do, help somebody. It feels good. You get to see, you know, other people's lives get changed and it just shows you how far you can come how strong you are and, and what you're capable of and, and the true nature of who you are it's really good Dave I could not have put it any better myself had I been digging in my nose prior to me trying to word it myself you know not only is this probably going to be another really awesome resource another really awesome experience video this could also potentially be somewhere for Danny to go and that's something else that we're going to be talking with David about today and trying to see if that's at all a possibility I'm very hopeful about this I'm very excited about this and I can't wait to see you know where this where this all leads to and what we're able to uh, to chronicle and capture by going out here and meeting this individual Alrighty, Dave, don't laugh at me for saying alrighty. You know, I'll, I got a few different ways that I like to start videos whenever we start filming. I like to say alrighty, I like to say so. I got a couple things. I got a couple little quirks. 
All right, so we're just wrapping up filming at the halfway house, meeting with this guy named David, and also meeting with a guy by the name of Pastor Mike. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who might, uh, this may come as some news to you, the guy is actually, he's a pastor, hence the name Pastor Mike. Uh, and this guy goes inside of the jails on Wednesday nights, and he does the sermon in the jail, but he also talks to guys about addiction recovery. He's a big part of the halfway house as well. We got an interview with him. We got the interview with David, the guy who's in charge. He's the halfway house manager. We talked about Danny while we were in there. And I think and I hope and I pray that we put together a really, really good, solid video with this. We definitely asked a lot of questions. We definitely got a lot of the background. We looked and saw the house. Uh, and it's a nice place. That's one thing that I got to say first and foremost. It was a really, really nice house. Really welcoming aura about it. You know, that'll, all, that'll really help with guys coming home from prison. You know, just, it's a comfortable environment. And it's not like there's 10 guys living in a house. I think at that house right there where we were just at, uh, there was only what, like three? Um, it's two right now, but it's three at the max. We learned a lot. And when you guys see this video that we put together featuring this Netflix HBO special type docu-series or documentary, docu-series could be coming from this. I think you guys are gonna be really impressed. I think you guys are gonna learn a lot. I think you're gonna be intrigued, interested, and uh, I hope you enjoy it. I do. And also, not only did we go film this video, you know, this was also an introduction between After Prison Show and The Halfway House. And I truly feel like the introduction went as good as it could have gone. This right here is a step in the right direction for After Prison Show and everybody who we feel, and everybody who we hope to help in the future. Man, I can't express it in I can't say it enough. These people are doing a great thing. And I hope that we can be a part of that. I really do. I guess the best way that I can explain this right now is, is and this is gonna sound so horrible, but it's almost like we're detectives right now. We're on a case, okay? A case. Uh, because we're trying to accomplish something and what the, accomplish, uh, what the goal is, what we hope to accomplish is, is to get after prison show more in tune, more in line, more involved with reentry and trying to help individuals in any way that we can. It wouldn't be right if we weren't doing that. We went to the job fair, that's where it began at. I wore a wire, I went undercover. We met Danny, we met David, we met uh, the guy that we, Dave and I both knew from the prison. I saw my very first probation officer and we met a few other people that we've yet to have the chance to reach out to. We also met the woman who runs reentry. But from going to that job fair, Danny arrived. From going to that job fair, this halfway house arrived. From going to this halfway house today, a reentry council board meeting has been uncovered. And we're gonna be going to that on Tuesday at 9 a.m. And I asked David what I could expect from going to this meeting. What, you know, tell me how this is. Is this like a board meeting? Are we gonna have a chance to mingle and, you know, get to introduce ourselves, get to talk a little bit about, you know, what we're trying to do, who we are? And he said, absolutely. He said, they're gonna go through the bullet points of what the meeting is supposed to cover. And then after that, they go around the room, everybody introduces what organization they're with, why they're there. And I just, real quick, I wanna ask you guys, like, what do you think, how do you think people are gonna respond? Uh, you know, you're gonna have DOC there. You're gonna have other re-entry things there. Who knows who will meet there? But what I'm asking you guys is, what do you think the room, the circle, the group as a whole, it's gonna think when I stand up and I say, hey, I'm Joe from After Prison Show and we're here to try to help as well. Do I get to stand up and talk? But anyways! <laughs> Dave, you know you ain't doing no standing up and talking. Shitting me. I mean, <laughs> I think you will take it pretty serious. You got a yeah. million followers behind you. A lot of these places are now getting into social media wise, which is crazy how late it is, but but you know what Cody? Anything they love publicity. You know You know what the good news about that is, Cody? We're number one in that department. We are number one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, social media? We got that. We that? We are that. I'll be that baby pappy. I'll be that baby pappy. Okay. Oh, y'all wanna talk about social media and Facebook and things like that? Snap face? MySpace? My book? I'll be that baby pappy. Snap face. Grinder? 
Of course, Dave. Of course you would say grinder. I mean, what's going on with you, man? You got a girlfriend now. And you still talking about grind? My she girl got a girlfriend. Does your girlfriend know that your her boyfriend got a boyfriend? Ooh! Bars. 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 Oh my god. No, she doesn't. Please don't post this video. <laughs> but anyways! Anyway. But anyway. Uh <laughs> I'm excited, and it was a productive day. I really, truly feel like it was. It was, man. Hey, you should be excited, Joe. Why should I be excited, Dave? Because you are leaving this thing. I need a reiteration of Friday after the job fair. Because you're a motherfucking genius. I know. I know. Because, now, I, I couldn't hear it, Dave. I, I didn't because have my... you're a genius, Joe. Me? I know. Anyways, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm not. But you know, don't let me edit this video. <laughs> There'll be three repeats of that. I know. I know. I know. I want to say this though. We walked into this situation not knowing what to expect. We only met David at the job fair, and I've been talking to him uh, a couple of times over the phone. And then today was the first real encounter with him, and also Pastor Mike. Pastor Mike and David. They both are in cahoots. They run these halfway houses together. I don't think you should use that word. What, cahoots? Yeah. What's wrong with cahoots? Cahoots implies like a negative. I'm not using it in a negative way, Dave. I'm saying they're both. It implies. Oh, it's, you know why it implies that? Because you're saying that it does. No, they're both it's... running this together in a positive manner. Man, that's so much better than cahoots. Oh, man, Dave. It's not playing Scrabble, man. We're not locked up anymore, Dave. We're not locked up. You ain't got to challenge everything that I say. I don't want that anyway. That's a real word. But look. <laughs> I, 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 where I was trying to go before I was rudely interrupted by Dave challenging my word on the Scrabble board. Where I was trying to go is this. When we walked into this situation, beautiful house, nothing like what I would have expected out of a halfway house. I was a little apprehensive. And the reason I was a little apprehensive is because I didn't really know how Pastor Mike who really does this for real was going to receive me, Dave Cody after prison show but I tell you what, we started with the interview with David, that joint was like some 60 minutes Barbara Walters type stuff whoa good lord you about hit them oh, oh. that was close right there. that was super close and it was all that Mercedes fault I've always said this anybody who drives a Mercedes can't drive or a Lexus uh, let me not speak so soon while, you know, I'm just going to be quiet right now because we in a bad part of the interstate. I was a, I was a little concerned that uh, Pastor Mike, and even David for that matter, the guy who was the manager of the halfway house, I was concerned about if they would really take us serious. And you know what? They embraced us uh, and they definitely took us serious. And I think, uh, I think we're on to something, y'all. I think we got a hot lead on our case. Again, detectives, after prison show detectives. Stop snitching. <laughs> Joe, what you saying you a detective for, though? Even to get your shirt with the badge on it, it says detective on the back. Oh. And all right, I just want to throw this out here, and here's me just being. Joe, come here's me. Shoe. Here's just me. What'd you say? Joe, the come shoe. Like Dick Tracy in this piece. <laughs> Look, and here's just me being silly, all right? Here's just me being silly, so just forgive me for saying this. But what if, hypothetically speaking, you know, we went to this re-entry meeting, and when we, when it was our turn to stand up and talk, we stood up and we were like, uh, hello, my name's Joe, and I used to be a prison snitch. What y'all need love to you. know? <laughs> what y'all need to know? I've got some information. Yeah, that probably would actually... They probably, probably like probably go over really well. Anyways, productive day, ladies and gentlemen. I got a list of 16 ways prisoners smuggle things into prison. Do you want that list? It's gonna cost you 